morning. I will start with a bit of prayer. Heavenly Father, I come before you that uh, you would guide my words this morning and listen to you um, and bring the message that you um, want me to speak this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's start with the reading um, of um, this John, uh, chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. Do not love the world or the things of the world, for anyone who loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Um, I guess, in general, we'll, I think you have in mind when it says, do not love the world, but I think there's sort of different distinctions where you've got the religious world. Um, you know, John, John 15, verse 18, um, Jesus said, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. And then there's the physical world. Um, Matthew 6, 24, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. And then there's the other one, which is people. Um, and the um, famous verse, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever loves him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So in um, this verse, um, in First John, what... Um, John was referring to will probably be more of the second one, the physical. So that, that's probably what we're covering here. So um, on that verse, uh, the second part of the verse, um, John wants us not to be too cut up with these things, the lust of the flesh, the worldly pleasures, and wealth and possessions, um, the, lust of the, the lust of the eyes. Um, and I think in the world that we live in, in the circular world, um, if you believe that this is all there is and that there's no God, then the only thing that you pursue in life is all these things. Um, and as some would you know, as uh, in First Corinthians um, chapter 15, verse 32, some would say, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. And um, as Christians, we need to see that that's, we don't get too caught up with it, but it doesn't mean that we, um, that we can't, we, we shouldn't live from day to day. Um, it doesn't mean that we, can't have holidays, we can't have, you know, enjoy good food, um, you know, have nice things and all that sort of thing. And we can, but we just do not get too caught up with it. Um, we do, we can enjoy this world. Like if you go to, you know, we, we do marvel at the world that God has created. Um, the sceneries, the sunset, the beaches, and we can enjoy that, but that's not all there is. Um, can we have ambitions? Can we plan for the future? And we can. Um, I think it's one someone once said to me, um, I guess I'm paraphrasing, um, we can make our plans for the future as if God will not return in a hundred years, but we need to be ready to just drop everything if he comes today. Um, so, we can't just separate and say we can't enjoy these things. Uh, and, you know, there are some who, have, who are forced to live from day to day, but um, it would be kind of foolish that if we choose to do, you know, to ignore um, some of the pleasure, pleasures of this life to, you know, enjoy 
what we have, what, has, what God has given us. Um, I guess I'm going to shift track a bit. And I don't know whether you've noticed in the last couple of decades, there is this shift in loving the world. Um, it's sort of having a sort of a literal meaning that you find that people are getting caught up with, you know, this is the world that we have, we need to protect it. And we have this rising narrative, you know, if you watch documentaries lately, it's, there's, there's this two narrative that's been sort of promoted, the rise of, you know, climate change, global warming, humans are destroying the world. And then there's the other one where I think for the last, yeah, 20, 20 years, it's starting to creep in that, this world is of, of overpopulated with people. And I think we, there's this shift in people's view that, you know, this world is dying, it's caused by human activities. And then, you know, with uh, the protests and, you know, trying to save this world and not care about human lives. Um, sometimes I read, you know, the news and most of the time you can see where they're coming from. But then when you read the comments of just people and you find that they, some of them, their views now, they have very low views on people, you know, their, their comments, their ideas that they made it so, sort of, you know, human lives are not important. And there's some to go as far as, you know, criticizing people, you know, parents who have too many children. It's saying like, you've got too many people, you shouldn't have kids. And that's, that's starting to creep in. And uh, there are even some who um, seem to view that animal lives are more important than humans. I mean, sure, we, we are concerned you see whales that's, you know, getting caught entangled in, in nets and we want to save them but it's gone a bit over the top when you have you know in the example in um, New South Wales at the mouse plague with people saying don't kill the mice and it's sort of hang on we've got farmers that are suffering and you're thinking don't kill the mice don't hurt them just send them off somewhere it's it's changed the view, world view of a lot of people that when, when people start to see that there are too many people and it's okay to lose a few, and we see that with you know, COVID now, um, there's some who just don't want restrictions, they want to do whatever they want. It doesn't matter if some people who have illnesses and they die, it doesn't matter, but it does matter. And that's the thing, it's, it's people are being caught up and it's this narrative that's sort of happening around. Um, so we have this theory of evolution that we started with from way, you know, two centuries, more than that ago. And it's people are starting to see and treat like humans as just another animal. And then you have this idea of overpopulation and people do think that there must be a way that we need to control the growth of uh, the human population. And um, you know, if and then the, with the climate change and how everything, uh, the, the, um, the pollution, if you add all this tree and probably a lot of other things into it, it sort of drill into especially younger minds that you know this is the problem we need to solve it and now if we look at you know abortion laws euthanasia it's it's actually becoming more palatable and you know i don't know whether politicians see it it's it's sort of maybe it's a you know it solves a problem an underlying problem in the world um I think even as we are against this laws coming to pass, um, we are trying to 
you know, the number of Christians who care about human lives, of people uh, that, you know, love people, it's dwindling. And then you have, you know, all this circular teaching, it's with fighting against the tide. Um, I think we can't see it as a sort of, this is where, where we're at. And I think that, especially with euthanasia, it's, it's not impacting this current generation as much, but it's gonna impact the generations that come after. And it's, we can't see it as just one snapshot, but we need to see how, you know, the little seeds of, you know, thoughts and actions that can progress and lead down the, the wrong path. Um, um, so I think to me, with this sort of topic where we come to, you know, abortion and euthanasia, I sort of see it seems like a, a sort of a bandage that, you know, lawmakers are trying to put over to hide, you know, the, the dark side of what it, it means. Because, you know, when we've got women with unwanted pregnancies, you've got, you know, whether it's going to be illegal abortion or you've got abandoned children, children who are abused and neglected or even left to die. And that's, we know that that's wrong. And we've got politicians trying to put this on top and let's make abortion legal. It's just, it's not solving the problem. It's just trying to mask it. Um, um, so we, if we go back to John where we've, the, the underlying problem is that, you know, the last of the flesh, the last of the eyes, that people are pursuing their own pleasure, their selfish pleasures, and they don't think of others or the next generation and it becomes a convenient solution that you know having abortion and then you can continue to do what you've always done um, and that's only one snapshot with euthanasia it, you know assisted dying it's it's not so much as going to affect so sort of this current generation of you know older people you need to think that what happens next so if you've got you know younger people now choose it with this belief that um we shouldn't have more kids that's overpopulated so they choose not to have children whether just not getting pregnant or having abortions if you see this snapshot and you bring it forward you know, another three decades, you find that they get old. And, you know, the last of the flesh and the last of the eyes no longer satisfies the desire. And then when you have, you know, no more likes on social media, you feel the sense of insignificance and the pride of life is gone. And then, you know, having no children or close families, when you have no one to love you or no one you love, where do you go from there? Your, your sort of um, desire to live, it's gone. And if you think that people choosing to die now is a problem, I think there's gonna be a big tide that's gonna come in the next couple of decades. And how do we solve the problem? And I think, you know, with, if we are focused on trying to make, keep abortion and euthanasia illegal, and if that is your goal, then you've missed the point because you're just ripping off the bandage you, and the underlying, you know, sin, the underlying promise to you there, do we overlook it? We don't. So, um, for us as Christians, we need to actually reach out to where the problem is, not trying to rip the bandage off and then job done. It's not done because 
you know, we, we need to show the world the difference between lust and love. And I think there's sort of, it's so sort of gray now that, you know, I find that there's a lot of people, the people who think that lust is love and that's what they're chasing after. And love lasts forever, but lust don't. And I think, you know, the world has lost this distinction. And, you know, I've sort of got my own thoughts on, on this and probably maybe one day I'll sort of put it together another message. Um, so we need to show the difference and to show them what love is and, and to, for, you know, to give, to show people there's hope. There is a better future. Um, and yes, the world is passing away and the last of it, but, you know, God is creating a better future, the, a new earth and a, a, a new heaven and a new earth. So we as Christians need to point to people without hope of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Um, so we need to remember that um, our mission is to win the hearts and minds of people um, and turn them to the, to the God that we serve. And, and we start by being example and we go back to the start of um, the verse. We do not love the world and the things of the world as the world does. Um, 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 not the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. And we need to so bring forth the love of God and show them <laughs> that's the better way. That's the hope. That's, you know, um, where we, that's, you know, we share our hope with them that they can turn to Christ. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Thanks. <laughs>